قال توم اس ان ذا قران واذ قال لقمان لابنه وهو يعظه The first one, يا بني لا تشرك بالله ان الشرك لظلم عظيم and then ووصينا الانسان بوالديه حملته امه وهنا على وهن وفصاله في عامين to the end of the verses First thing after the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your parents. This is something you don't read in the previous books before the Quran. The way the Quran focused on al-walidayn. The way the Quran focused on silatul rahim. Visiting your relatives. So dear brothers and sisters, the sunnah of this Eid is to visit or to make a phone call especially for those who are living here and they have relatives back home this is your responsibility today to call and Allah made it easy for all of us today with whatsapp and social media that it does not cost you that much but some people still they don't have time because they are quote unquote busy i know you are busy but there is a responsibility on you toward those who are relatives or parents or brothers and sisters in this in this day of eid we are trying to resolve the conflicts between each other by visiting and if there is a problem between you and this brother the sister with the sister is to try to have conflict resolution during this day this is the sunnah in order to keep our hearts clean toward each other that's number one number two what do you get from ramadan after 30 days allah subhanahu wa ta'ala focused on al-quran and as you all celebrated laylatul qadr which allah said khayrun min alfi shahr why because the Quran was revealed in this night. Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu anhu used to say that he had a dream and he heard in his dream a voice coming to him saying to Ahmad ibn Hanbal to let the people read my book, the Quran. Whoever wanted to get closer to me, let them read the Quran. And he felt that this is a voice coming to him from Allah. And then he said, Ya Rabb, the people to read the Quran. Because some people will recite the Quran, but they don't understand the meaning. The response was, Even if you don't understand what you are reading, but still you are reciting the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will live and we will die and we will never be able to understand 100% the meanings of this book. We are supposed to read the tafsir, understand what we are reading, but at the same time, when you are standing in prayer and you are reciting the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are getting closer and closer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this book, Allah is laying the foundations for the success of your presence on the surface of this earth before you move to the next life. Allah is explaining to you everything so you cannot say, I didn't know. Some people, when Ramadan is over and they pray Eid, then we don't have Taraweeh anymore. Yes, Taraweeh is no longer there, but this is Qiyamul Layl. Qiyamul Layl is there every day. People used to come regularly to the masjid. Now, some people, maybe for Friday only. But Allah is asking you to come every day if you can for Fajr, for Isha, for Maghrib, for Zuhr, for Asr, any time. But make sure to at least come once a day. And if you can't make it for Fajr, this is where Allah is saying, 
أقل الصلاة لدلوك الشمس إلى غسق الليل وقرآن الفجر. He is underlining for us the values of Quran when you read it at Fajr. إن قرآن الفجر كان مشهودا. Allah is saying truly the Quran of Fajr in the morning is witnessed by the angels. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa taala want us to grow. in the month of Ramadan. So we can take from that month what is good for our society. And that's my number three. So we can take Hudan Linnas, guidance for mankind. We can take from the teachings of that month, Ramadan. These days in the city of Baltimore, in this wonderful masjid, which I have been coming now regularly for almost 34 years since I first to this to, since I first came to this country and you remember when Imam uh, before Imam Daryl the brother who was from well, well before William Shaheed the brother Imam no, Shakir Imam Shakir exactly who passed away and then Imam Shaheed and then Imam Daryl. Dear brothers and sisters, this masjid has a history. And our brother Musa showed me the documentary was made about this masjid. This is for you to understand. We are now living in a completely different era. You know what's going on in Gaza today. The situation in Gaza changed the whole situations now. It's not only the people in Gaza who are suffering, they are, we are making dua for them every day, but actually this is now a challenge for America more than the people of Gaza. It's a challenge for the Europeans more than the people of Gaza. Like where is your human rights? Where is your values that you have been teaching us all the time? Where is it in reality? That's why A lot of people, by the way, who are becoming Muslims these days, and you have seen them during the month of Ramadan, they are telling you, we could not believe what's going on over there. And look how the people are so patiently accepting what's happening to them. Dear brothers and sisters, we are living in a completely different era today. America is changing, Europe is changing, but are you changing with that change? Are you changing? Because everything around you is changing. And you have to be ready for the bigger change which is coming after Gaza. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, look at the people who are becoming Muslims here almost every day. At Masjid al-Rahma the other Friday in Ramadan, right after khutbah, six people said their shahada. America is changing. But the people in America, as I was preparing for this khutbah, the inspiration from Allah to share with you is this, that America should know that the more Muslims here means more mercy. More Muslims mean more help. More Muslims mean better relation between the neighbors. More Muslims means less drugs. More Muslims means less alcohol and less problem. More Muslims means less crime. More Muslims mean better society. Not Islamophobia, not for the people who are scaring others from Islam and more and those are terrorists. If the people want to know what the true message of Islam, let them come to Masjid al-Haq. Let them see the surrounding of Masjid al-Haq. Let them see how the people, their life is changed after they are becoming Muslims. This is not only here, this is in New Jersey, this is in New York, this is all over the United States. Dear brothers and sisters, people here in America should know that becoming a Muslim means becoming a better you, a better citizen. Not only here in this life, but somebody who is also For sure, he or she knows what will happen to him in his grave. 
and in the hereafter. Because today some people here, doctors and engineers and PhDs, if you ask them, excuse me, what will happen to us after we die? Um, to be honest with you, I'm not sure. Why are you not having all of these PhDs? What's all of this knowledge for if you don't know what will happen after you close your eyes? Dear brothers and sisters, I swear by Allah, here in this country, go to all of these wonderful institutions and ask some people, by the way, when I die, where do I go? Mm, I don't know. We were having some interfaith discussions, and I asked some of our Jewish brothers and sisters, so according to you, when we die, what will happen? Well, I got 10 answers. From 10 people, 10 answers. This is, if you want to take only one thing from the Quran, explaining to you exactly what will happen from the moment you close your eyes and how everything you are doing here is going to be impacting your next life, that's by itself is enough. Dear brothers and sisters, one of the lessons we take from the month of Ramadan is giving. Is giving, and when Allah give you more, you have to raise your standard of not living, but your standard of giving. When Allah give you more, I don't want you to raise your standard of different cars, a different house, but your standard of giving. You used to give 50, now I'm going to give 100. Now I'm going to give 200. This is what we learn from the month of Ramadan. Giving and being charitable, being always generous to help others and to bring smile to others. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we learn from the month of Ramadan how to be a better husband and how to be a better wife in order to have a successful marriage. Successful marriage. Not a marriage that will end up in divorce. No. You will do everything you can to be a better yeah. husband and to be a better wife Bye. so you are closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah help us to take the best message from Ramadan for our Eid and for the rest of our lives. الله أكبر 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 الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد عبده ورسوله خير الخلق والبشر اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالم إن إنك حميد مجيد بر وارض اللهم عن أربعة الخلفاء أسادة الحنفاء أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وارض اللهم عن الصحابة والتابعين وتابعيهم بإحسان إلى الدين Finally dear brothers and sisters your message always needs your donations and may Allah help all of us to be generous for this not only masjid but the mother mosque of so many mosques in Baltimore اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا مولانا سميع قريب مجيب للدعوات اللهم ارحمنا فإنك بنا راحم ولا تعذبنا فإنك علينا قادر وانظرنا بما جرت به المقادير برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعنا على دوام ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك ولا تجعلنا يا إلهنا من الغافرين ربنا كن معنا ولا تكن علينا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما واغفر اللهم لنا ولوالدينا ولمن أحسن إلينا ولمشايخنا ولأصحاب الحقوق علينا 
برحمتك يا مولانا وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله اتقوا الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون والحمد لله رب العالمين آه عيد مبارك وكل عام وانتم بخير السلام عليكم ورحمه الله الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر